محمد بروفيسور اوف كارديو ثراسيك اناستيزيا اند سيرجيكال انتنسيف كير منصوره يونيفرستي ام اونرد تو بريزنت دكتور محمد دكتور محمد ويل توك اباوت ان انتريستينج توبيك فور اول اناتيست سبيشلي بيدياتريك اناتيتيريال اناتيستس بيدياتريك ديفيكلت اير واي تفضل دكتور محمد Thanks so much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zad, for your uh, great efforts to implement this initiative. And thank you, Professor Manel, for introducing me during the following 40 minutes. I'll talk about the pediatric difficult airway management, the role of video laryngoscope. First of all, I declare I received the free airway device samples from AMBO US and AirTrack UK in 2014 and 2015 for use in published studies. And they have no direct financial or other interest in AMBO, AirTrack, or any other industry in the context of this lecture or my studies. I'll go to introduce the world and new era of video laryngoscopes in pediatrics and emphasizing on applications, advantages, disadvantages, and types and then try to address an answer for the alerting question, which is best to reach for a conclusion. First of all, the concept of video scopes was born secondary to the advances in telescopy. Telescopy started from rifles and military used by military, as you can see here on the left side, and also by our colleagues in endoscopy suites and uh, as well as in laparoscopy, endoscopy, as they are introduced, they are going to using these advances in telescopy for laparoscopy, for uh, ceracoscopy, and so on. The same concept came for laryngoscopes. You know we are using direct laryngoscopes, which need alignment of different axes. I'll, I'll show you to get the best view. However, there are two main types of video laryngoscopes, either fiber optic laryngoscope with a cable, as you can see here, is connecting the image from the tip of the blade to a remote screen. Or another one with a digital laryngoscope with the micro chips in uh, transmitting the image to also to the remote screen attached to the handle of the score. Uh, we have uh, three poles. Um, you need to uh, address them. Can Dr. Saad start with the first pole, please? Dr. Saad? Okay, here I have a question for all of you. Have you ever used a video laryngoscope in uh, your clinical practice regularly, occasionally, rarely, never, not accessible to you. Can you click one of them, please? Yeah, we finished now. Uh, okay, can we take a look for the results? Share now here. Do you see the result now? Yes. As you can see here, um, most of, about half of uh, respondents are clicking on regularly using or occasionally using. At least we have about 70% or more are using video laryngoscopes. Interestingly, we have 9% as they don't have accessible video laryngoscopes. We'll go for the next one. We have a next poll. Have you ever used a video laryngoscope for a pediatric patient regularly, occasionally, rarely, never, or not accessible? Dr. Saad, please. Okay, just one second, please. I try to share the second one. Uh, no, not this one. Okay, one second, please. Uh, what is the second? Ah, 
I need to get that. Uh, okay. For some reason, I am not able to uh, get it. This is the sixth. That's the first poll. I okay. need to go through the second poll. Uh, Sorry. No, I I couldn't get the second poll done. No problem. It's okay. okay. Thank you. So they Why can see I'm the result on the on the chat. They can see that in the chat. They it's the first the one. It's the first one. It's the first poll. This is the first poll, Doctor Saad. I understand. I understand. But they can do this one on the chat. They can do the second one on the chat because I couldn't get. Uh, the it would one. be difficult to calculate it anyway. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can skip this and uh, we'll move. Why I'm asking this? Because this, there is um, a large database came from uh, pediatric difficult intubation, including 13 children's hospitals in the United States between August 2012 to 2015 and January 2015, including more than 1,000 pediatric tracheal intubation. You can see here. Um, Can you remove it, please? It is the first world still. Okay. You can see here, we have um, only about 20% um, and one-fifth of uh, respondents are using indirect laryngoscopy, video laryngoscopes as a first choice for tracheal intubations in pediatric, which is interesting indeed. If we take a look for applications, it could be a first choice for elective oral, as well as nasal intubation in pediatrics and also units. Here is an interesting uh, case report for nasal intubation in a pediatric patient who is large. Uh, okay, we have a poll here. Can we respond to it? Have you ever used the video laryngoscope in a pediatric patient regularly? Occasionally, rarely, never, not accessible. Can you choose one of these answers, please? Is 128 yes, Yeah, please, can we take a look for uh, results? Um, 16 regularly, I will show you now. Okay. Okay, now you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, that is very interesting. Uh, you can see we have about, um, for more than 40% are not using video laryngoscope or they don't have uh, video laryngoscopes accessible for pediatric patients. I think that's much more than this United States study, including 18% of people are not using a video laryngoscope as a first choice. We can proceed, we are still talking about the application of video laryngoscopes and as a first choice, for intubation for oral, and here in this case report was a large mass in the mouse, including the mouse for an easel intubation. Uh, additionally, and using of Puji for an isotracheal intubation for children less than 18 years, uh, that is documented to be better than with the CMEC, which is the one of video laryngoscopes, so I'll address it later on. It reduces the complications. You can see the using of um, Puji with the, uh, here as you can see, the using of Puji with the CMAC is associated with less significant, significantly less bleeding, nasal bleeding. And additionally, is all you can see patients' age is ranging from eight years up to 66, they including both pediatric and adult patients. Anticipated difficult laryngoscopy is another indication for using video laryngoscopes or even for unanticipated difficult laryngoscopy. If we go back for the DEST, the Difficult Airway Society algorithm for uh, difficult for uh, difficult airway management in children aged one to eight years, and you can take a look here for step A, 
for initial tracheal intubation plan when the mask ventilation is satisfactory, you don't have a problem in ventilation. With more than four attempts using direct laryngoscopy, you have to consider using a PUGI, straight plate, or video laryngoscope. So this is for unanticipated or anticipated airway difficulty. You know, in thoracic surgery, you need the, for pediatric patients, on pediatric patients, you need to isolate or separate the surgical lung. So in small kids, less than six to eight years or six years, usually we are using blockers. Blockers, particularly for infants and small kids, it would be difficult to be introduced through the lumen of endotracheal tube because of the small diameter of the tube and the smallest available diameter of five flexible bronchoscope, just 2.6 or 2.7 millimeter. So in this case, placement of bronchial blocker directly through the glottis to intubate the patient with a blocker and then introduce the endotracheal tube alongside. Using a video laryngoscopes can facilitate this. Here is a reported case of using of armed blocker with inserted out outer to the tube using a CMAC from Stores. As you can see here, the blocker is going directly through the glottis before inserting the tubes in the tube is inserted alongside the blocker. Also, you know, for a flexible, uh, for a bronchoscopic intubation in pediatrics, you need either to go through nasal airway or to introduce a laryngeal mask as introducer for your fibroscope or as a conduit for a flexible bronchoscope. Using um, any of the channeled or traditional plates, video laryngoscopes could be helpful in such case. Here is one of the traditional curve blade glide scope is used in two years, all the pediatric patients. And you can see here in the, the simulation, mannequin inserting of the video laryngoscope and fiber optic bronchoscope will be inserted alongside the blade. The benefit here, you are investing the presence of video laryngoscope to taking the soft tissue and tongue away from your passage and you have to go directly to the glottic opening, facilitate endotracheal intubation. Also, we described before using uh, King Vision plates, that was one of the channel plates with a fiber optic bronchoscope for facilitating of intubation in adults and pediatrics. Awake tracheal intubation, directly using video laryngoscope. Here is a case report using a CMAC in such patient with severe craniofacial malformation secondary to amniotic uh, pan syndrome. And in this case, they take awake lock with a video learning scope here it might be raise a concern why they did it intubate directly as long as they can seize the glottis before induction of anesthesia a weak intubation using the, the video learning scopes is well known and here is reported in 10 years old boy with uh, morbid obesity and multiple comorbidities with body mass index 37 and a weak intubation was accomplished here successfully we have here one of our cases, in this case, it is not the tongue. And the left side here, it is a large mass. It's a newborn, three days old. And this is a large mass, including the mouth opening above the tongue. And you can see the mass is protruding from here. If we take a look here about um, the, for this video, you can see we did awake intubation. You can see the video, glidoscope is inserted beneath the mass and above the tongue. So the mess up here is a uh, mess. It is not the tongue. And with uh, glidoscopic guidance, we advanced the tube into the glottis with some navigation to facilitate passing of the tube. And here in patient is awake after intubation using a glidoscope. Training of novice practitioners uh, could be facilitated with using the video laryngoscopes because we have a remote screen. So you are sharing information between the mentor and the trainees to facilitate a training of people before going to live patients. Here is an example of efficacy of airway scope from Pentex for training of pediatric airway. Then this study, including 100 patients and including two simulations, BBSM and here on the right is the ELS BB mannequin. Both of them airway scope compared with a straight 
blade of uh, Miller blade, it could be successfully reduce the time of intubation in post uh, many cans. Interestingly, this is secondary to increasing of success rate with using airway scope compared of Miller in this simulation based study. Advantages of using video learning scope, eye and airway not uh, need not line up because as you know, if we take a look here for this X-rays, we have um, a tracheal axis, we have a pharyngeal axis, and we have oral axis. To use direct learning scope with Macintosh or Miller plates, you need to align all of this axis to take a look directly into glottis. However, with video learning scopes, I like a channel video learning scope here, we can see the two axis, pharyngeal and tracheal axis, are almost aligned together. So there is, and you are looking to a remote screen, not directly into glottis. So this is the advantage of using our video learning scope. Here we have what's called external angle between the Macintosh plate and the tracheal act tube. Here is the angle is 20 degree, but it is reduced to minus 20 with using of channel video learning scope on the right image here. The problem of alignment of the three axes, if you have a patient with limit, limited mouth opening, like this patient with congenital malformations, pediatric patients with morbid obesity, cerebral palsy with negative deformity and fixed rotated head to right side, patient with arthrogryposis, or patient with mucopolysaccharidosis uh, syndrome or patient with microphallus inclusive syndrome, all of them, uh, video learning scopes successfully used in them. Also, it is helpful in case of limited accessibility. For example, if you are going to anesthetize the patient in the MRI suite or in CT suite and all the, with using all the machines, which is a longer one, and the head is not accessible for you, if you are going to anesthetizing a patient in prone position, and there is the problem in your tube, using a video learning scopes could be helpful here. We described using of tracheal intubation in prone and lateral position in a patient with ink seal using a glide scope. Also, other benefits, others can see and help you. If you have a difficulty, you need some advices from others, they are sharing the image on the remote screen and can help. Also permit sharing of medical information among team for during one of intubation, you might found like we found here, some babylimatosis and you call in the surgeon to take a decision and they change the surgery for the patient. And same if you have a tracheal wave discovered during intubation, during glidoscope, as you can see here. We have a disadvantage for video learning scopes. They are not angels anymore. There are variable learning curves, which may take longer to intubate. The problem to take a longer time to intubation, particularly in pediatrics, that you are going to expose the pediatric patients to risk of hypoxemia. By growing or building up of learning curve and increasing the experience and the skills gained by practitioners, this time to intubation is expected to going down. If you take a look for this study, including 77 operators with various experience in pediatric tracheal intubation, performed 10 attempts of tracheal intubation using GlideScope, AirTrack, Megras. All of them are video learning scopes. You can see the time to intubation is significantly decreased, starting from the third attempt here and also from fifth attempt. So the time of intubation is decreased from the first trial up to the 10th trial. The 10th trial, that's meaning you have a 10 time experience. That's the beginning one. Ease of intubation also is decreased uh, from the third attempt, as you can see here on the left side. The passage of tube made difficult despite grid view. You have to put in your mind a good visualization of the glottis doesn't translate anymore to ease of intubation. You can get a perfect view with a video learning scope for the glottis. However, your tube, because of its natural curve, it's going to the esophagus. That's why you are usually advise your colleagues to get the tip of learning scope away from the glottis. You need to sacrifice with this optimum view to just a good view 
to allow the natural curve of the tube to going anteriorly to the glottic opening. As you can see here, we have a good view. We are sacrificing with excellent view for the glottis. We keep the tip of glidoscope away from the glottis because otherwise you have the tube is going directly to esophagus rather than to glottis. Fogging and secretions may obscure view. There is a simple trick. Just turn on your video learning scopes for 45 seconds or 60 seconds in advance of intubation. That leading to heating up of the pulp or light source of the camera and avoid um, leading to vaporization of uh, fogging and secretions from it. And do suctioning before inserting your video learning scope. Some video learning scopes, as I'll describe, are associated with um, inherent antifog mechanism. Loss of depth perception. You might know our colleagues in surgery, they are training them to uh, be skilled in moving of hands using clamps and cutting, doing cauterization and so on in a distant place on the remote screen. There's the same problem here. We have a loss of depth perception needing to more be skilled when using video learning scopes. What is the problem? If you are focused on the screen and you are going to introduce the tube without looking into the mouth of the patient, that is leading to software, ballot uh, injury, soft tissue injury, anterior perforation. This is why we have usually four golden steps in using any video learning scope, particularly for the curve blade learning scopes. You have to first lock into mouse while introducing the tip of the scope then lock to the screen for the clotting uh, image, and then introduce the tube while locking into the mouse to avoid injury of lingual nerve or pillars or soft tissue by the tip of the tube. And last step is lock to the screen to direct your tube to the clotting opening. Here are just an example, some examples of pillars information. You can see here is the hypopharynx. Here is the antelope pillar, it's perforated by tube. Secondary to using of different laryngoscopes, video laryngoscopes, glide scope, air track. And also in our theater, we have a one reported case, as you can see here. We use the titanium glide scope blade, and there is a perforation of the anterior pillar during insertion of armor to reinforce the tube, required repair and the changing in patient's voice after surgery. So it is a hard lesson to be learned. We are talking about a more complicated technology and very expensive technology indeed. We have a mini products, mini suites available in market and much confusion. I can summarize the type of video laryngoscopes into three main categories. Stalets, which like any stalet you are using, but this is a video stalet. And we have a guide channel, this video laryngoscope with a channel alongside its plate to introduce the tubes right or traditional modifications for our commonly used Macintosh plate, which is a curved plate. Usually we are reserving stalets and guide channels for patients with limited mouse opening or limited cervical movement. The next poll, um, Dr. Saad, please. Dr. Saad. Okay, the question, if you have access to video laryngoscope, which of the following types of video laryngoscopes are used in your practice, particularly in pediatrics? Stalet rigid video laryngoscope, a video laryngoscope with a guided channel, a video laryngoscope with an angulated curved plate. Please click on your answer. Still finding. Okay. Okay. It ends now. Okay. It's here now. This is very interesting. You can see about half of respondents are using uh, video learning scope with angulated plates, and uh, one quarter uh, or more than one quarter are using guided channels. Uh, about twenty percent, twenty-two percent are using stalet. Uh, rigid uh, pro laryngoscope is very interesting indeed. And here I'll go to the next slide. 
We'll start with the stalets. We have uh, two types available in market, up to the best of my knowledge, bone fields and multi-view system. Bone fields are coming from stores, and they have a uh, portable light source, or you can use any light source from uh, Pentex or even Shores and uh, Shores or even Pentex at your uh, theater. There is eyepiece here. There is a piece to providing option. You can see it is a rigid plate. And uh, we have also an angulated tip here. There is an eye tip. Usually it's connected to camera system. It is available in an angle of 40 degree. Here is the 40 degree angle. And there is two size available. Uh, size two can be used with tube 2.5 to 3.5 for first year kits. And uh, above first year, you can use 3.5, which can be used with endotracheal tube size 4 to 5.5. There is a disc, uh, case report about using um, um, pump fields for endotracheal intubation in a patient who is uh, eight years old with temporomandibular joint ankylosis. Also, this is another mannequin study. You can see here a uh, mannequin study in two uh, uh, scenarios with easy scenario and difficult airway scenario with increasing the cormacly hand to grade 3B. You can see bone fields as, as comparable time to intubation with direct laryngoscopy during norm, normal and simulated difficult airway. However, success rate is 100% with bone fields. This is a study including 150 intubation by 10 anesthesiologists using a tube size 3.5. You have to put in your mind the size of tube is one of the most important independent factor which can determine the success rate for intubation. The smaller the size of the tube, the higher the success rate. Another study including 60 trainees with five trials with endotracheal tube with size three, comparing bone fields and irregular uh, rigid bronchoscope in three scenarios, normal airway, anterior larynx, or Pierre-Robain syndrome. The time of intubation is significantly decreased um, from the first trial to the fifth trial. And there is no big, and there also time of intubation is longer with bone fields compared with the rigid bronchoscope. This is a normal in anterior larynx simulation. And the and same uh, differences are reserved in bro simulation as well. This is a video demonstration for using all stalets uh, laryngoscopes. This is an example of using of bone fields. You can see the cameras connected to the tip there. And, sorry. And light sources connected here. Here is the shaft. In all video laryngoscopes, you need to replicate the blade or shaft of your video laryngoscope and endotracheal tube. Here is the endotracheal tube is going to be loaded over the tip of video laryngoscope after turning off light source. One of the golden tip here, is, here is the holder for the tube to fix it. And you can see this port, you can apply oxygen to the patient. One of the most important points, you have to avoid that the tip of stalet is going outside the tube. Otherwise you are going to injury the patient's soft tissue. It shouldn't be like this. It should be retracted inside the tube as you can see here. And then you have to use a traditional direct laryngoscope just to remove the tongue away from your pathway and introduce the pump fields with the tube overruled over it alongside the right side of the plate behind the molar thesis is called pump fields retromolar endoscope. And you, need, you started with angle angulated to the left side until you found the glottis, then rotate yourself to make the angle angulated forward and then introduce the tube inside and get your stalet outside. The next one of the stalets is multi-view. The difference here between pump fields and multi-view is the tip here is uh, the, uh, the deflectable. That's meaning you are uh, have a handle in your hand and you can change the angle here. 
is this flexible up to 20 degree angle here is a 20 degree you can move the tip up and down like a mobile stylet like schroeder uh, stale it if you know about it the viewing angle is variable between uh, 60 degree plus or minus 50 percent there is a voltable screen on the handle 2.2 inch lcd screen with 2.5 megapixels you can apply also auction a continuous auction from the sport and we also is available in two diameters 2.5 to can use the tube 3 to 3.5 for first year kids and outer diameter of 3.5, it could be used for endotracheal tube 4 to 5.5. Also here it described using of uh, multi-view scope for 21 months old patient with Schwartz-Jambel syndrome with a congenital malformation of the face. This is an interesting study, including 15 experts, 15 residents with endotracheal tube 3.5. In two scenarios of normal airway and Piero pain uh, simulation, as you can see here, using a multi view. The time to intubation is significantly less with multi views than comparable and with the, is comparable with different uh, with direct laryngoscopy in both normal and difficult airway simulations. Okay. Air track. We are talking now about channel video laryngoscopes. We have two types of air tracks available in market, the gray one, size zero, and pink one, size one. Size zero for tube 2.5 to 3.5, with the most opening up to 12.5 millimeter. Size one can be used for tube 4 to 5.5 for the mouse opening, a minimum mouse opening of 12.5. Uh, it is a channel video laryngoscope with 90 degree shape. There is a built-in uh, antifog system, just you need to turn it on the light source so for 30 to 45 seconds. is low cost, about $90, and single use, of course. You can use any smartphone, either using iOS or Android with a specific uh, holder to use it as a viewer, and you can transmit uh, images by Bluetooth. Also, there is a Bluetooth piece here. You can take image and you can save and you can record also, you can use any stores or Pentex or other video camera for uh, displaying. Here, this is an interesting study, um, including uh, 83 novice nurses we, uh, with a mannequin six year old, the BDSM and chest compression system locus, and using endotracheal tube of five. You can see the time of intubation with a BCR in a difficult and normal airway. And even without CBR, is significantly less with air track compared with Macintosh. Pentex airway scope is coming from Pentex. They are available in two sizes. The bank one is the pediatric one, can accommodate you 5.5 to 7.5. Infantile one is including neonate, uh, for neonates, a tube less than five millimeter. Both of them are uncovered tubes. The view angle is 80 degrees. This is the largest angle visualization angle available in market for channel video laryngoscope. There is a channel uh, LCD screen, 2.5 inch, with very high resolution and channel plate. Interestingly, there is a crosshair display, like you are going to shoot the tube into the glottis, which facilitates the intubation indeed. Here is a description of using a Bentex airway scope after feeling intubation with McGrath in a 12-year-old girl with golden hair syndrome. Also in this study, including experienced anesthesiologists, more than 10 year experience with more than 50 intubations, and the tube was calculated per age, they found using a Pentex airway scope has a comparable time to intubation with Macintosh, so there is no difference here. However, interestingly, Pentex associated with more this injury than the, uh, Macintosh, than direct laryngoscope. King Vision is another channeled video laryngoscope is available for pediatrics with also viewing angle 80 degree like Pentex. Also, we have a display a screen of 2.5 inch LCD. They have post non channel the standard and channel the blades with anti fog treatment mechanism. You can see we have uh, 
وسايز A نون شانل سايز 2 شانل ان نون شانل فور بيدياتريكس يوجوالي سايز 1 is used for a pediatrics less than one year size two standard and size two channel used for children one to 10 years. Size three can be used for more than 10 years. And um, there is a difference of uh, mouse opening. Mouse opening, it should be as a list of 10 millimeter for size one. And for standard blade, uh, blade to 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter for 2C. Interestingly, in this study, including 200 patients less than two years old by five experienced anesthetologists using King Vision or Macintosh. Time to device out is significantly less with King Vision. However, there is no difference between time to intubation using direct laryngoscopy or King Vision with the trend towards higher time to intubation, but not statistically significant with King Vision. Vivid track. Vivid track is interestingly is tailless, single use, available in pediatric for endotracheal tube size four to size six, and has a stainless plate anti treatment. <laughs> Excuse me. As you can see, there is a USB connecting cable. It could be connected to any tablet, to any laptop, computer or screen, including operating by Windows 7 to 10 or Android uh, 4.42 or greater with integrated USB cable. The next channeled video laryngoscope is FlexView. FlexView, as you can see, we have a grip. This grip leading to articulating tip to be moving forward. It is a channeled video laryngoscope and it's described to be used in pediatrics. Here in this video demonstration, I'll show you how to use any type of video laryngoscopes as an example of the air track. You have first to lubricate the tube and lubricate the tip of a video laryngoscope, insert the tube through the channel, turn the light source on, do suctioning for the glottis to avoid obscuring of your view with secretions. And now insert the scope with the mouse and through the mouse with the display facing the feet of the patient. As you can see, then advance it in with moving it backward towards you with some twisting movement to adjust the view and then advance the tube through the glottis, hold the tube in place, remove it from the channel and get your scope outside. Don't forget to inflate the cuff of the endotracheal tube. Traditional modifications from its name, it is looks like our routine. You routinely use the Macintosh plate, the curved plate. All of them are coming from the same concept. Copdec VLB 100, it resembles the direct laryngoscope, as you can see here. There is attached screen 3.5 inch red, green, blue um, over the handle. The angle is too small indeed, this is uh, 39 small angle compared with other curved plates is available in size two and three Macintosh curved plate and the straight Miller plates zero and one for pediatrics. Stuhr C-Mac is 60 degree and it is available in also Macintosh curved plate two and three and the straight Miller zero and one. There is a very high uh, resolution camera with 15 megapixels. It's available in straight and curved blade, as I told you. The angle is 60 degree. Here is the angle. Also, stores introduce the single use the blade with a fiber optic reusable cable and disposable blade, both curved and straight. It's a single use CMAC uh, S. Here is the angle, 60 degree as well. Also, there is a portable pocket monitor, which is a 2.5 inch portable screen. And recently they introduced the versatile C-Mac 
with a portable aside remote screen. It's connected by a cable 50 millimeter in length and the screen is 3.5 inch. The idea of remote screens, as you can see, it is propagating after the era of COVID-19. Because in, if you are using video learning scope, you have to choose a remote screen rather than the one attached to the handle to stay away from the mouth of the patient in case of infection and suspected or positive patients. CMAC with D blade, the pediatric D blade, is the largest angle for a curve plate available in market. From its name D, letter D, you can see the angle is 80 degree, and this is the letter D because if you draw a line here, you have a D shape. Here is the D shape. In this comparative study in children aged blue or greater than one year using a CMAC or Macintosh. Uh, any reported complications, there are non-significantly higher rate of complication with CMAC and uh, however, uh, and there is no difference in first pass success rate in this study. This study including 452 intubations on 422 patients less than 18 years old. MacGrass. MacGrass is available with a remote screen over the handle. It's 2.5 inch. It's available in reusable and disposable plates, size uh, Mac plates, curved plates, one, two, and three. Also recently, they include uh, introduced MacGrass uh, M X blade with like a D blade of C Mac with uh, 80 degree. There is a study including 75 novice paramedics using MacGrass with inline stabilization in the mannequin or with a C collar. You can see the first bus success is 99 with MacGrass compared with Macintosh and inline stabilization and still high with 93% compared with 45 with C collar. Glidoscope is first introduced in Canada and including a plastic plate Curve it to 60 degree, here is the angle, and the head reflective screen with the high quality screen. We have described the four step technique and I'll show it for you later on. There is a plastic curve it to 60 degree, it is available in titanium, Lupro to two or a disposable plate. Glidoscope EVL, they are available for pediatrics in size 0, 1, 2, and 2.5. For uh, MacGrass with uh, pattern, uh, glidos, sorry, glidoscope go, 3.5 inch landscape, which is available also on size uh, Lupro S1, 2, 2.5, 0, and 1, as well for curved plates, three sizes, 1, 2, 2.5, and the straight plate, 0, and 1. Co-pilot, it has a blade with a port allowing introducing a puji. There is a remote screen, and it is a 4.3 detachable screen. The cheese are uh, disposable, is available in size three and four, and could be provided with a rigid stalet. Into Pride, it is another traditional modification. It is a stainless steel with a Mac plates one, two, and three. Miller plates, you can see here in this, this one, this curved plate, one, two, and three. Miller is available in double zero, zero, one, two, and three. And also Philips blades one and two. True view, uh, and true view is BCD is another technology. It is based on the rarefaction. You know, the rarefaction in ocular physiology it is the same concept. There is optical lens here, and the image coming is you just a rarefaction with a 40, 60 degree and it's available in two uh, five inch LCD and the stainless steel blades is available in size zero for kids less than one year, size one to one to three, two for two to 16 years and size three more than 16 years. There is a study including 153 patients less than 16 years old with normal airway. You can see the success rate is 90%. This is observational study. And uh, you can see success rate. It could be translated into optimizing the glottic view. You know, the grade one in Cormacli hands, that's meaning the best view. 93 of patients are associated with such good view. UE scope. 
UE scope is available as the touch screen three inch is a single use plates is available in size zero, one, two, and three. In this interesting uh, study, in this study, comparing using uh, Manicam five years old with a corpless CBR system with schist compression and using UE scope for intubation, the first pass success was significantly higher in normal airway and difficult airway, normal airway with CBR and difficult airway with CBR compared with a Miller blade, a straight conventional blade. Also, time to intubation were significantly less in all scenarios of normal and difficult airway with and without CBR using UE scope. Here is a video demonstration for using any type, the standard diffusing of any type of traditional uh, curved plates. You have to first use a stalet with all of them. Don't forget this. You have to lubricate the stalet. This is the glidoscope. You have to insert that you, as a glidoscope. The first step, as you can see, lock into the mouse to avoid injury while you are introducing the tip of plates through the mouse of the kit. Then the second step, you have to lock to screen to find the best glottic view. You shouldn't introduce your tip too far in. Third step, lock into the mouse again while introducing that tube. And fourth step, lock to screen when the tube is going towards the glottis and the view area over the screen. And then introduce that tube, remove the stalet, Hold the tube in and frame the cuff and remove the blade. Now, as you can see, we have many types of much confusion. So we have stalets, we have guide channels, and we have traditional modifications. So many products are much confusion. So which is best? This is a difficult question to be answered because there are few studies comparing them, and most of them are mannequin studies. Here in this study compared glidoscope, glidoscope here in 50 and you know, about 100 patients with bone fields, retromolar laryngoscope. You can see the glottic view, chromatically hang grade one, which is the best view, is more with bone fields and glidoscope. And also BOGO, <coughs> excuse me, it is the percentage of optimum glottic view. It should be 100%. And if less than 100%, 0%, that's meaning all patients or this 44 patient have 100% best view using pump field. This is the 100 patients with normal airways. As the comparative study between air track and glidoscope for a time, including 26 pediatric intensive care uh, clinicians with diverse experiences, and they used uh, GVL glidoscope with air track on Americans, they found time to intubation was significantly less. You can see there's a big difference between 19.5 seconds to 46 seconds using glidoscope. That is thanking to not the air track per se, but for anyone of channel video laryngoscope, the presence of channel facilitate just so you are introducing the scope to the tip and then the tube going through the channel directly to the glottis. So this is is to the channel uh, of uh, this guided laryngoscope. This is study including 50, 65 anesthesiologists and uh, 5, uh, 15 practitioners, and uh, also pediatric critical care medicine. They are experienced with using of each uh, device. They're comparing King Vision, D blade of CMAT from Shores, and conventional care with Macintosh and the straight Miller. They are using two simulations. Normal airway and difficult airway with limitation of neck movement to something like a neck collar. You can see there is a big difference here in time, and statistically difference here, but I think it is unreliable study to found a difference of 1.5 seconds between King Vision and CMAC with a B value of 0.01. So I would overlook this study. In another study, including 45 novice anesthesiologists and uh, anesthesia nurses, using a three to six months ARSM uh, mannequin with beer or pain anatomy, they found time to intubation was significantly less 
uh, using uh, similar plate, of course. But you can see in uh, Mac grass, there is no difference between C Miller, C Mac with a Miller straight plate and Mac grass. It's an interesting study, including one 107 uh, novice paramedics using endotracheal tube size five and six year old mannequin with chest compression low using locus system. They compared Codec, Copilot, into Pride and the traditional Macintosh play. They found time to ventilation are comparable. There is no difference between the four groups. However, if you take a look for time to intubation was significantly less with co-pilot and uh, Copdeck and co-pilot. So Copdeck uh, and co-pilot are performing better than Enterprise for endotracheal intubation and child during chest compression. So in conclusion, Unfortunately, no one model appears uniformly superior to another. What you have to do? You have to use what is at your hand. However, if you have the opportunity to purchase or to get two types of video learning scopes, if you have such luxury, you have to choose to get one apple and one orange. One ability could be stated video learning scope or shunted video learning scope, which would be helpful in a patient with limited mouth opening and limited cervical movement and angulated video learning scope for better visualization, particularly if you have a bleeding from, bleeding from airway, if you have vomits, if you have extreme difficulties and so on. And finally, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this evening. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tahan, for this interesting, informative, and updated uh, lecture. Uh, please, Dr. Saad, allow my camera. Sure. Um, uh, the, uh, now the floor is open for any questions for uh, Dr. Tahan. We have one question, Dr. Tahan. Uh, I think you addressed, but uh, the, 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 the audience need more information. Uh, Dr. Isam, ask about uh, what do you prefer or is air track is superior uh, 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 laryngoscope? Can no, you start I your camera, uh, I cannot re conclude for the, this fact. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a meta-analysis uh, comparing uh, channel video learning scores, but in adults, not in mm. pediatrics. They found air track is better than others. However, for pediatrics and up to mm. the current available uh, information from literature, we cannot reach for this conclusion. Using of any channel video learning scope, it could be helpful in a patient with a limited mouth opening and restricted neck movement. However, you have to put in your mind, you should be very skilled in what you are using, regardless of the type. Okay. Also, Dr. Hisham um, Saleh asked about, uh, he found uh, uh, difficulty during passing uh, the tube, uh, although the view is very uh, obvious and clear. That is, how, uh, ask ask ask, uh, ask you how to overcome this problem. Yes, that's what I explained that during the talk. This is one of the major problems. You can insert the tip of the scope until the glottis to reach for the best glottic view. But mm -hmm. in such case, you cannot advance your tube in natural care. You need to sacrifice with this. You have to get the tip of your laryngoscope, either channel or traditional plate, as far away from the glottis, just to see part of the glottis in a good view, but not an optimum view, then insert your tube, the natural curve, with a hockey stick uh, stalet, a reshaped stalet, it will advance the tube into the glottis. Of course, in channeled video learning scopes, we are very rarely to use uh, stalets. We don't need to use stalets, but you might need to use uh, bougie in such case. Also, this is, might facilitate introducing the tube. You need to intubate with bougie, with the reshaped tip of the bougie to 30 degree or hockey stick appearance to intubate with bougie and then advance through the channel, uh, the guided channel of the scope. Thank you, Dr. Tahan. Thank you for this uh, updated scientific talk. Thank you. Uh, sorry, sorry, I have a question, Dr. Tahan, about uh, do you have experience with the Barker tube, with the flex tip silicone tube? Yes. Just 
prevent this uh, issue? Yes, to some extent. Yes, there is a problem in this one. You need to rotate the tube 180 degree counterclockwise to avoid uh, hitting against the, uh, the cord to introduce it. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. Uh, Thank Dr. you. Tahan, I have a question, if you don't mind, from myself. Sure. Um, do you think that um, video laryngoscopy are going to be, um, especially in this time of COVID, are going to be a little bit more widespread? <coughs> uh, sorry. As we would like to improve the experience of the beginner or the trainees uh, to use the, you know, the normal conventional uh, laryngoscope and they now are moving swiftly to um, video laryngoscope, uh, laryngoscopy to uh, avoid direct contact with or potential contact with the COVID uh, air, um, uh, air droplet infection? Uh, Dr. Saad, this is a very important question indeed. And I, um, I thank you for highlighting this. All guidelines released from uh, BSA, from ASA, from uh, ASA, from CRT, and uh, also from EACT itself, this is a recommendation and Difficult Airway Society, of course, the European Difficult Airway Society, all of them including the first and only choice to use a video laryngoscope as much as possible and accessible. Yes, it is a problem, I know, it uh, has a financial constraints. <coughs> However, um, there are uh, many introduced uh, cheap uh, video laryngoscopes coming, it is not a brand, but it is working well, it's coming from different areas, from uh, China and India, and I think they are working well at uh, an affordable price to some extent. Yes, I agree with you, it is a problem in training. And not all, only during the COVID area, but also before uh, COVID uh, era, because during this time we are going to, we are afraid about our patients indeed. Okay, and we don't have such luxury to have um, uh, simulation in advance. Yes, we need, we are offering for them a half day or one day a difficult airway uh, workshops, but it is not enough. So we are using video laryngoscopes to avoid injury for our patients, particularly when we are talking about pediatric patients. They might affect their skills in using traditional splits and straight plates to gain the skills with straight plates, with scared plates, which sometimes the video laryngoscopes is not a common and is not just only my own experience and very few number of cases you might gain experience and you get exp um, difficulty in using a video laryngoscope and you have to go back mm -hmm. for stable sometimes and here is the problem but if we discuss this problem from other aspect if we look for specialization in surgery like uh, special types of under um, specialization in uh, surgery itself for specific type of surgery for laparoscopy for endoscopy and so on uh, these surgeons also they are lacking experts and uh, experience and skills and, and using general surgery for laboratory for exploration and so on it is the same problem which it is obvious it would happen with anesthesiologists in next generation Thank you. Welcome. Any other question from the floor, please? Um, very nice. And uh, at the end, I would like to thank um, all eminent speakers tonight. Uh, the first time to use modular teaching today, pediatric anesthesia and neonatal anesthesia. Uh, I would like to thank all with the first one is Professor Samir Ansari. He has honored us by his presence today as a moderator of this session with Professor Manal El Gohari. Uh, the three top speaker experience anesthesia, pediatric anesthesia in the world, Professor Hani Zahavi, Professor Muataz Abdurrahman, Professor Muhammad Tahan. I can't thank you enough on behalf of my colleagues and on behalf of all attendees. Um, next Sunday, uh, we are starting to uh, just move the time a little bit uh, forward at uh, 7 o'clock uh, uh, Cairo uh, time. Just to keep tuned, if we decide about that, we have to have voting with our professor and our colleagues because the people in the, in the Gulf area and the Far East are a bit late at the moment. 
Uh, we are in Dublin and, uh, and uh, England, we are okay, that's fine, we can stay longer, but they are, I think, they are around 11 uh, before midnight there. Uh, 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 next Sunday, we will have uh, Professor Samir Ansari again with a very nice, interesting uh, case discussion in Kardec ICU. And uh, uh, Professor Magid Salah will have uh, speak, will speak about uh, advanced cardiac monitoring in uh, cardiac anesthesia. And uh, once again, we have our two speaker tonight, uh, Professor Muhammad Tahan again, and he will speak to us about very, very interesting topic. We'll keep it in the advance in the uh, advertisement. And uh, everybody, thank you very much and uh, good night. And hopefully we'll see you again. That is one of the most successful session in the MEGA online course. And on behalf of my colleagues, I would like to thank you very much. And hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you. If you don't mind, uh, the video, Andy, is uh, the video is. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, uh, Dr. Martez. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dr. Martez. Uh, sorry, Dr. Martez, I, I haven't seen that. Um, yeah, your lecture was very interesting, interactive discussion. Uh, you know, I'm so proud of you tonight. I'm so proud of myself that I am here between all of those eminent top people uh, in the Department of Anesthesia. And thank you again. And hopefully we'll see you again next Sunday. Next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.